Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Lone Wolf 902. As you can see, we're out here in a new hot tent. This is a One Tigress Smoky Hut. It's uh, basically a two-person shelter, really. It's got a stove jack in up here. I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute. But basically, we're out here in a soccer field. We're not out in the middle of the woods today. And I got my son with me. Say hi. Hi. So we're actually, we're in a soccer field and we're just right behind uh, a main street. So there's gonna be some traffic noise and whatnot, but for the amount of gear that we brought today, we wanted to get to a nice flat grassy area, carry in all the gear just seconds away from the car. And the gear we're talking about is stoves. So today's video is gonna be hot tenting and hot tenting setups. So stick around and we'll get into it. All right guys, so here we got a couple of ammo can stoves. This one over here is a 50 caliber ammo can stove, standard size. And this big boy is a 20 millimeter ammo can stove. So for those of you who've stuck around the channel last winter, you would have seen this guy in, um, I wanna say February, February or March, but I'll put the link to this video at the end of this video. But so you guys can see this in action. This is that wood stove with the legs off and all the pipe inside. And this is the new 20 millimeter can stove that I just finished last night. So still gotta burn all the paint off and get everything kinda situated, but we're gonna go ahead and set up each stove inside of the tent and we're gonna have a look at it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna set up our, our regular kinda camping furniture, if you will. I'm gonna treat this video as a demonstrational video. Uh, obviously we're not camping, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up our foam mat and I also have a packable chair. We're gonna set these two items up and just to kind of give you guys uh, an idea of the working space that we have inside of the tent and where the stove's gonna go and how that's gonna be situated. So why don't you go ahead and take this and I think we'll, right where you're sitting, if you wanna jump up, unroll this blue side up so it doesn't fold back up and just kind of unroll it right there and I'm gonna go ahead and set the chair up all right okay so this is kind of funny because uh, it's the middle of August right now and it's about 30 degrees outside and here we are setting up a hot tent <laughs> I imagine people walking by are probably looking, thinking, that guy is crazy. But this winter, I'm not messing around. I'm gonna be out camping a lot. And I wanna have all of my winter camping gear squared up before fall even hits. I wanna be ready to go this year. So, not messing around. So here we got her chair. Desmond, you got the mat all set up, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this out and we're gonna bring in our first stove and get that all set up, which I believe is gonna be the small ammo can stove. So let's go ahead and you wanna go grab that and bring it in? All right. So we'll get that set up in just one moment. All right, so. Trying to work around the space with uh, two people setting stuff up is uh, it's a little tricky. So what we've got is our chair. If you want to have a seat in the chair, you can go ahead. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this up real quick. Like I said, this is the 50 caliber ammo can stove. Inside, I've got a number of things. I've got some tent pegs, aluminum. I've got some sections of steel stove pipe. I got a little screwdriver, which I need to assemble the legs. And I've got four aluminum legs that I went ahead and made up specifically for the stove. So that's all the contents right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the legs on and get the stove standing. I should also mention that these two ammo can stoves that I made, I made them upside down. And what I mean by that is the lid is on the bottom. I'll get into that in a little bit. But what I'm doing right now 
is I've just taken this lid off. So now I have access to the screws inside so I can mount my legs. And like I said, I'll, I'll get into why I did that and how I kind of went about building it. But for now, I'm gonna get these on here really quick. And again, I apologize for the, for the wind and the traffic. I'm hoping my microphone's kind of blocking a lot of that stuff out. But that's what I'm gonna do right now, get these legs on here and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so we got the little stove in here. I got it pegged into the ground and I got my stove all set up running out the stove jack. So I wanna go ahead and show you guys uh, an outside view and then we'll come on back inside. All right, so here we are back inside. Uh, as you can see, I got the stove pipe running through the top. We got the stove all pegged in. Uh, I got my aluminum legs on and they're just screwed on with little wing nuts on the side. And the stove right now is 100% secure to the ground and it's not, it's not really able to move anywhere. Now the reason why I went with aluminum tent pegs through the legs was because it is a rather small stove and it is short. The pipe that I have on here right now isn't a permanent solution. What I would like to do in the future is get a, um, an eight or maybe a nine foot section of titanium pipe off of uh, like a titanium stove and hook it on here and run it up. And that'll significantly lighten the load of the stove because right now the can is very light and everything on it is aluminum other than the stove pipe. The stove pipe is incredibly heavy. It, I mean, the stove itself, everything inside all packed away is probably about in the 10 pound range. So it's not, it's not crazy, crazy heavy, but it could be lighter. So I went ahead and anchored it to the ground because it may be a little rear heavy with the pipe. And the last thing I want is this thing tipping over and obviously causing some problems. So anyhow, got the, the door open here and the camera right now is directly on top of my sleeping pad. So you're pretty much looking at what I would see when I'm laying down. And there is an ample, I, mean, I, I can't get over how much room there is still in here. I mean, Desmond, right where Desmond's feet are here, he could lay down and have his head up towards my feet or have his head down here. There's enough room for two adults in here, definitely with a stove. So this shelter is super, super, super awesome in my opinion so far. I haven't tested it, I haven't slept in it. This is actually one of the very, very first times that I've actually had it set up with gear. I set it up prior to this in, I don't know, what, like a week ago maybe? Yeah. Probably about a week ago, just for five minutes, just to set it up, get it stood, you know, set up and get inside of it and look at it and go, this is awesome. So this is the first real setup with gear inside of it. And I gotta say, I love it. It's looking really, really good. I love the color. It's basically the same color as my MSR Hubba NX Series tent. I don't like bright orange or bright red tents because it's got that nasty red orange glow when the sun comes up and you're inside the tent. It's just, it's not natural. This is perfectly natural. It's super, super nice. I love it. Give you a couple of these chimney pieces if you want to go set them down there in the grass. Pull the pegs out of the ground. Well, that one's in there. Pretty far. All right, I'm gonna put these inside, okay? And I'll give you. You want to grab that handle there, pick it up, and gently go put it outside, and I'll go grab the big one. Okay guys, so we got the big can in here now. Now, the chimney section that I have, I only have one piece on right now and it's 30 inches long. As you can see, it's just barely poking out. So there's gonna be another 30 section, 30 inch section put on top of that. So it's gonna be up quite high. Um, this has not been burned in yet at all. So all this paint needs to be removed. The galvanized needs to, cause this pipe is galvanized. That needs to be burned outdoors. To, uh, to burn all that off. So 
when I go out on the weekend, I'm going to be taking this with me this weekend coming up. And I'm going to basically set it up and I'm going to burn it for a good five hours away from everybody and uh, get all those fumes and get everything kind of burned off of it. So then it will be safe to burn inside. But for now, I'll show you guys what I got going on. Okay, so <laughs> filming this is, is rather difficult. The location we picked, as I said before, is uh, there's a lot of cars going by. So I'm trying to film in between loud trucks and, and whatnot. But anyways, this is the big stove. Pretty big, huh? Mm -hmm. A lot bigger than the other one. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison at the end again to kind of show you guys what it looks like. Uh, but anyways, so we got the galvanized pipe. This is a four inch to a three inch conversion piece that I have on top. I got a piece of four inch exhaust pipe, big old pipe, welded on top. And it's probably a good four or five inches long. And then everything just kind of connects to that. So my buddy's down at uh, Busboy Mufflers in Aylesford, Nova Aylesford? Yeah, it's in Aylesford, Nova Scotia. Uh, Chris and Kyle hooked me up big time, so thank you to those guys. Did an awesome job welding this and cutting the hole. Again, those are the same guys that helped me on my, uh, my 50 can uh, stove. So the smaller stove, they did that and they did this. So thank you guys for that. Here comes another loud truck. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and a whole bunch of ants in here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the door for you guys to show you what we got going on here. If I can reach around here. Made a latch out of aluminum and there's three stages of where it can lock in to, to open. So right now it's completely shut. And then I got a second stage to lock it in. So it's just barely open a crack. And then I got another stage where it's open so more air can get in basically. But we'll see how that works. So here it is, door open. I purposely made the door open this way. What even is that? A motorcycle? Like who, who drives things like that? Like, come on, man. Yeah, we, we can hear you. Oh, man. Anyways, <laughs> here's the door open. Like I said, I purposely made the door on this stove open this way. So it basically come to the to the pipe pretty much because I, I knew right where it would be sitting. Not that that matters. I mean, it, it could open the other way, but this space has already been taken up. You can't really sit in the pipe. So why not have it open to a space where it's already being consumed? So here you guys can see the opening's rather large. See right in there there, Desmond? Yep. Pretty cool. I went ahead and I made a little sliding vent here. So it's always breathing through this hole, which is one thing, because it's not airtight. So right now you can see there's a little hole there, a little hole there. It's always gonna get air through it, but then when you open it up, yeah. it really lets the air get in there. And uh, and this is all this is all gas because I haven't burned it yet. But uh, it'll also allow a lot of that light to come out to have that nice ambient stove lighting. I do have a metal grate inside, and it's actually, it's up really high. It's probably about three and a half to four inches of air gap underneath. So this thing should breathe very, very well. Um, got a large cook surface. We made sure to put the pipe back far enough so we have enough room to put a really big skillet, frying pan or pot or all, all that kind of stuff up top to do some cooking. And it's probably it for the front. So I'll bring you guys around the side because I, I added a few more features on this side. All right, so without getting in the way of the camera too much, you can see that there's three self-tapping screws, one here, there, and there. That's how high the grate is from the bottom. So you can really see there's, there's a good chunk of air gap all the way from the front all the way to the back. That's nothing but, um, but air. All the ashes and stuff will fall down through the grate that I have in there. So it should breathe very, very well. And it's really important to, to have a big stove like this breathe really well to burn efficiently. So it's not smoking and filling your tent with smoke. Now over here, this is just simply a lid off of a salsa jar. So one of those glass jars screw on there. And what I've done is put a rivet in there and you can rotate it. So right now it's all open. There's four breather holes that are completely open and you can kind of dampen it down a little bit so they're all completely shut. I believe that's shut right there. 
or you could open it halfway, let some air in, or all the way. Now it's very important where I put this, and the reason I put it here is you can see this screw is actually just above these two holes plus this bottom hole. So that means these three holes, all that air is gonna come in underneath of the grate as opposed to on top. So that's gonna introduce air underneath of the fire and then go up and, and really, really fuel that fire. There is one hole above to kind of equalize what's going under and what's on top, you know, so there's enough airflow going in and out. Now, with all the airflow in this stove, it's very important to have a lot of exit, a lot of exhaust. And that's why I went with a large pipe. As I mentioned before, it is a four inch collector down to a three inch. And the reason I did that is if the three inch pipe is too small, I can just lose the collector and go straight out the top with a four inch pipe. So I have a little bit of flexibility. And as I mentioned earlier, a titanium stove pipe. Once I do acquire that, I'll be able to use that on all my stoves. I just need to change out the size of the rings. So the titanium pipe will fit on this. My other stove plus my other stove that I have at home. So it'll be one pipe for all stoves once I get that. But for now, this is what we got. All right, so let's go ahead and close this door. So for demonstrational purposes, this is, well, how about you jump off just for a sec. I'm gonna move this a little bit forward. All right, go ahead. This setup right now, exactly where the mat is, is where I'd be comfortable sleeping, in the tent. I have, I'm scooched down all the way because he's sitting here, so really I'd be up a little farther. So my feet won't be close to the wall, nor will my sleeping bag. My head won't be close to the wall or my sleeping bag as well. And I have enough room behind me, loads of room to put my entire backpack right behind me. I got my chair directly over here to the side. There is a massive, massive amount of living space inside of this tent. It is unreal. So even if I go ahead and sit up, I still have like a good three feet from my head all the way up. It is super, super roomy in here. So I believe this is gonna work really, really well. Again, this is the One Tigress Smoky Hut. They now offer this in a green or a coyote tan, I'm not quite sure. And this existing color, which I highly recommend this color. It lets in so much filtered natural light that it's just, it's really, really nice. It's a nice feeling being in here. So, probably looking at the stove wondering, why aren't there any legs on it? I haven't added legs to the stove yet because I needed to come out today, right now, to see where I could put them. What I'm going to do, and I should mention this first, it's very important when you have a stove, I'm sleeping on the ground. Heat rises. And what I found with my smaller can stove and my other hot tent stove from my other hot tenting videos is you want to be above the stove if you can because then you're up in the heat channel. So this is where the heat's going to build. Now where this shelter is a pyramid, it's going to build up and I'm pretty sure it'll sink back down. Like this is a big stove. So I don't think I'm gonna have any issue being on the ground. But like I was saying, I, I think with the legs, what I'm gonna do is it's probably gonna be about that high off the ground. Maybe two inches. I'm gonna run some bolts through the lid, which are through the bottom, and then probably use a piece of a um, little bit wider. So it'll be about four or five inches wider than the stove of aluminum angle iron. And I'm going to basically the same length as the stove so it all packs inside. What that'll do is it'll get it up off the ground for one, so it's not burning anything underneath of it. And two, it's going to widen the stove to prevent it from tipping. Now this particular stove really isn't tippy, but when you're on top of snow and ice, if that melts, it could want to tip and drive that pipe into the side of the, the tent, which is not good. So that's where we're at right now. Now I know where I can go, how wide I can go. So that's the deal with that. So I think we pretty much covered everything. What do you think? Huh? We pretty much cover everything? Yeah. All the details? You like it? Yeah. Pretty good. Not too bad for a, for a basement project over a couple days. 
Yeah? Yeah. So what do you say we yank this out and do a little side by side again and talk about them? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and yank the stove out and we'll do another side by side comparison and kind of talk a little bit more about them and hopes that you guys will get out and make one of these yourselves. Like I said, it is very important to burn all the paint off and make sure your pipe, like I'm using galvanized steel, I've already mentioned this, burn it off, make sure it is safe. And I also, every time I go out in the hot tent, I have um, an O2 sensor or a monitor for, uh, for clean air. So it's battery operated, I always bring it. And what I'm gonna do is hang it off of, uh, off of a point somewhere. And I put it down right where, or even down, sorry, I, I could hang it, but more than likely I'll put it down right where my face level is. So if it does start to kind of build up some, some bad gases in here, the alarm will go off, I can wake up and get out. I don't think it's going to be a problem with this tent because the, as you can see right behind Desmond here, there's a good four inch gap from the ground to the, to the bottom of the tent all the way around. Now I could stake it down, right down to the ground, but I kind of like it this way because there's a lot of ventilation that comes in through here. So I think it's going to, it's going to really add to the atmosphere of clean air, clean, fresh air and it'll help kind of pump some of the smoke out. So let's go ahead and get these out and we'll talk a little bit more about the stoves. All right, so we got our stoves outside, huh? Mm -hmm. So as you guys can see, there's a huge, huge difference in size. This guy is huge <laughs> and this, guy's, this guy fits inside my backpack actually. So that's the reason why I'm not letting this one go. This one fits in my pack this one's more for putting on the sled and pulling it in the snow or loading it in the back of the truck, driving out to a location and then setting up camp. Um, so that's kind of the, the gist of that. Now this stove, I have five holes drilled in the bottom that are permanent breathing holes. And then I went ahead and also added this little tiny swing gate. And like I said before, this stove, I actually have a video of it set up burning inside of the tent. I'm gonna link that at the end of this video so you guys can go and check that out. But I do believe I have to modify this. I'm gonna to have to make a bigger hole to add more breathing because I do find that this stove doesn't burn as efficiently as it could. And I believe it's because it's not breathing good enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more breathing holes on the bottom and possibly enlarge this breathing hole in the door or make another one. So that's the deal with that. And this guy, I don't know, I haven't burned in it yet. So we're gonna go ahead and burn in that this weekend and I'll get some footage of that and I'll throw it up in a different video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I got for you guys today. The Smoky Hut shelter and two DIY ammo can stoves. So I hope the background noise wasn't too loud and I hope you guys got something from this and Stick around, because this winter is going to be awesome, right? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to pack up, and we're going to head out of here. Say peace out. Peace out. Can you come inside? No. Got some water. Yay. Try and get, oh, there it is. It opened. <laughs> Try them on. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Wow.